Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to Number 7 Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermonette is called Never Let Your Guard Down. When I was in prison, I met an individual who had a tattoo on both of his hands. And the first uh, word that was on there was knuckle up. And the second word was guard your grill. And he had it tattooed on his hands, knuckle up and guard your grill. And I asked him, I said, what does that mean? And where did it come from? And why did you get that tattooed on your hands? He said, your grill has to do with your mouth and knuckle up has to do with, uh, you know, put your fist up and, and guard yourself. And I said, well, why did you get the tattoo? He said, because after I knocked someone out in prison, I got the tattoo. And, and he told me that the tattoo was like a warning to let people know not to mess with them. And if they are going to mess with him, that they better have their grill guarded. And I want to tell you as a Christian or the body of Christ that we need to be the same way spiritually. We need to guard ourselves. We need to guard our mind and guard our heart from the devil or he will knock us out. And I think one of the tricks of the devil is to provoke Christians to underestimate him or overestimate him. Either direction will take you in an error. Either direction will cause you to be defeated by the devil. And he loves it. You know, he doesn't even want people to believe in him that he's real or he wants people to be petrified of him and think that he, uh, you know, that they can't defeat him through Christ. You know, there's no reason if we have the full armor of God on that we can't defeat the devil. We will defeat the devil as long as we stay on guard. I'm going to read this Bible verse from Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1 all the way down to verse 3. And it says, when Sunballat heard that they were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incest. And incest means that someone who is uh, extremely upset, extremely angry. He ridiculed the Jews. And in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, What, are, what they are building, if even a fox climbed on it, he would break down their walls of stone. You know... It's a matter of time as a Christian before your life turns to rubble, you know, or before you became a Christian, what caused you to become a Christian. There's going to be a situation or circumstance that's going to be greater than you, and it's going to feel like your life is falling apart, so to speak. Well, this wall in Jerusalem was falling apart, just like some of our lives can fall apart. And there's going to come a time that we need to establish Jesus Christ as the foundation of our new life. Well, we're going to be entering into the year 2012. And it's a perfect opportunity to create a new foundation for the new year through Jesus Christ. Let Jesus be your foundation. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and then all things will be added unto you. And on that note, as you are following God, as you're being led by the Spirit of God, you're going to start to establish your life back again by brick by brick by brick. It doesn't happen overnight. They didn't build this wall overnight, but they put brick by brick, one at a time, and eventually the job got done. But the way that they did it is they assigned families, women, children, wives, husbands, everyone, soldiers, non-soldiers, Everyone that was helping to rebuild the wall, they also had a sword and a spear by their side. They were prepared for the attack of the enemy. And we need to be the same way as the church. We need to be on guard 24-7, never having any uh, 
open opportunity to be overtaken by the devil. We need to constantly be on guard in our mind. That's why we need the daily bread of God so we can constantly be prepared for when the devil attacks us. No, God is not going to bring us out of all the attacks. We're going to have to stay in the attack and we're going to have to overcome it. And the way that we're going to overcome the attack is through the word of God. That's why we have to constantly be consuming our consuming the word of God, constantly be going to church, constantly praying, constantly reading the Bible. If not, if not, the devil is going to find one little area of your life where there's a weakness and he will overtake you. And in the process of being overtaken and God will allow it to happen, it's going to cause you to humble yourself and it's going to cause you to cry out to God and then God is going to build you back up just like this wall and he's going to tell you again to be on guard 24 7 we cannot play around like the with the devil just as uh that inmate or that person in jail was saying knuckle up and guard your grill the man was not playing around and neither neither is the devil we need to take the devil serious we need to be prepared mentally and spiritually he's not going to let up He's not going to go easy on us. He's going to come at us full force, and we need to come back at him with full force. And the area of your life where you're gifted at, the area of your life where you're skilled at, that's going to be the area where you are the most weak spiritually. Let me say that again. The area where you are the most gifted at and the area where you are the most skilled at, that is going to be the area where you are the weakest at because you're more subject to be prideful in the things that you're good at. And that's where you need to humble yourself. And any time that you ever feel like you got hurt by someone or you got offended by someone, Ask God, what is it about the fence that caused you to be hurting in the first place? I'm going to tell you by revelation that the reason why you're hurting is because that is the point that you're prideful in. See, if you humble yourself, the hurt will go away. But see, the only thing that has a possibility to be hurt is the flesh not the spirit. See, when someone does us wrong, when someone disrespects us, when someone attacks us, when someone discourages us, when someone doesn't appreciate us, our spirit, the Holy Spirit inside does not care. What does care is our flesh, our pride. And if we humble ourselves, the pain will eventually go away. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Keep watching and praying that ye may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I want to prophesy that this year 2012 is going to be a blessed year for those that are being led by the spirit. It's not going to be a year of famine. It's not going to be a year of suffering. It's going to be a year of spiritual prosperity for those that are steadfast, for those that are standing on guard. God bless you and have a wonderful day.